All right, what's going on guys? Today I'm going to be replacing the motherboard in my Team Black Sheep Tango 2 Pro controller. I'll show you the problem I was having, what caused the problem, and how to fix it by replacing the motherboard. Timestamps can be found in the description, so feel free to skip around. So starting off with what's wrong with my controller, uh, basically there's no memory for when I turn it off and then back on. So if I turn it on, you can see, first of all, there's no welcome to Tango 2, and you can see the throttle's up, and it didn't give me a throttle warning. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is this storage warning. It says bad radio data, press any key, and then it's gonna ask me to calibrate the sticks. And it doesn't matter if I calibrate the sticks um, and then like create a preset and everything. When I turn it off and back on, it'll, it'll do the same exact thing. It'll ask me to calibrate again, and all my presets that I create will be gone. So I got in touch with TBS support when the problem started, and I went through a bunch of troubleshooting attempts, updating firmware to different versions, uh, and it was all to no avail. That being said, I do definitely recommend uh, your first step being getting in touch with Team Black Sheep support, even if you didn't buy directly from their store, because they can be very helpful in uh, finding the problem, and hopefully you'll be able to fix your problem without having to go through the process of replacing the motherboard. This motherboard did cost about $40 um, on the Team Black Sheep store. However, the support team was very generous in sending it to me for free, which was really nice because I had already paid, this controller is about $220, and I had only had it for two or three months before the problem started happening. So as a college student, not having to spend that $40, I'm very thankful to the Team Black Sheep support for being so generous in helping me solve this problem. So let's go ahead and get into the replacement. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is flip the controller over, and you're gonna to wanna to remove these two rubber pads to expose the screws that give you access to the inside of the controller. So you can see the seam right around here. You're just gonna to have to try to put your nail into that seam, and you can use a little bit of force. You're just gonna to wanna to try to peel that pad right off. Just like that and you're gonna go ahead and do that to both of them and then we're gonna get onto the inside okay so once you get these rubber pads off you're gonna to want to go ahead and use the tool that should have came with your controller i believe this is a 1.5 millimeter hex driver and there's six screws you're gonna to want to remove there's one here one here two here and then two more right here okay so once you've gone ahead and removed these six screws the back of the controller just comes right off like that, exposing the battery and the motherboard. So right here, you can actually see the problem with my motherboard. This SD holder is not supposed to be able to do that. It is supposed to be soldered on right here. I don't recommend trying to fix this by soldering it on because you can easily short circuit something else in the controller if you mess up your solder. So just play it safe, replace the whole motherboard. And in order to do that, we're going to take this battery off. It's Velcroed on. You can see right here, there's Velcro. So it'll peel right off. And you're also going to want to remove the battery connector. Just like that. Place that to the side. And now we have our motherboard. Okay, so once you're on the inside of your controller, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is disconnect this connector and pop off this ribbon connector right here. So this just comes right off like this, and this pops right out. It's a little tough, it's a little small, but now that's out. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove 12 screws, four here, four here, and four in the middle. Once you've removed all 12 of those screws, there's a little wire hooked in right there that you're just gonna wanna slide out just like that. And now you'll be able to remove the motherboard gently from the controller. Okay, so what was actually holding mine in was this little bit of foam was stuck to my ribbon uh, cable right here. And you can just go ahead and if that happens, just peel that right off. It's not a big deal. And now the motherboard is almost fully disconnected. It's still held in right there. Okay, so the last thing holding uh, the board to 
the main frame is this thing right here, which if you have some tweezers, you can just go ahead and gently remove from the motherboard. Try not to rip it, of course, and it'll just slide right out. And there's also a little connector that you're gonna to want to disconnect. Okay, so these gimbals come right off. They were part of the screws we already loosened. So you can just gently remove those like that. I'm now gonna go ahead and get my new motherboard, which is right here. You can see just exactly what is part of the motherboard. So these switches are gonna stay here and this is gonna stay on it. You can also see that the SD card is not dangling off the side like it is here. That's a very good sign. These button caps that are on right here just slide right off with a little bit of force. And you're just gonna to wanna to go ahead and pop them right back onto here. All right, so these button caps that we just removed, we wanna take the new motherboard. We want to make sure that this rectangle is a uh, long ways down like this, not like this. And you wanna make sure that this gap in the outline is gonna be pointing in towards the controller and then also down up. This is the side, we want this thing pointing up towards us. And you can just go ahead, push that right in. You'll hear a nice snap and it'll pop right into place. Go ahead, do the same thing with the other one. Just like that and those look perfect. So now let's move on to putting these back in place. So the next step is to put the gimbals back on. You wanna make sure you get the right one. Um, you can see one doesn't return to the center and one does. This is the throttle. This is gonna be going, this is the right way up for the motherboard. The throttle is gonna go on the left. So we're gonna go ahead and line it up and flip it upside down and just get four screws here, 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 and here. So once you have the throttle one in, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and do the same thing with the pitch and roll. You can see there's like a bar right there and that's gonna to point to the outside of the controller, line it up with the four holes and then you're gonna to wanna to hold it, flip it over and go ahead and put the screws in. I found the best way to do it was to put all four screws in uh, kind of loose just to hold it in place and then go back around and tighten them all up. So the gimbals are back in place. The next step is going to be to take the front of the controller and we're gonna put these two pieces back together starting with this connector. This gold part needs to lock right onto here and then these two arms need to be threaded through here and the wire around just like that. Okay, so after way too long, I was finally able to get it back in place. Um, I had a problem after I struggled to get these back in. Tweezers, definitely recommend. Definitely uh, useful to have tweezers handy. Um, but then once I finally did get these in, the gold connector popped out and I was struggling to keep these in and then also get the gold connector back in, but it's finally back in place. So you're just going to take this wire, um, that's connected to the thing you just put back in place. You're going to put it right in there, just like that. So a couple tips to make it easier to get this main board in. Make sure your connectors here and here are not being tucked in underneath this board. Also, uh, it's easier if you push your throttle all the way up because that creates a block here for when you're putting this screw in because there is a very strong magnet right there that'll pull that, that likes to pull that screw in. And if you don't have tweezers with you, it can be very hard to get that screw out. And the last tip is to start in this corner because this piece is the hardest to get in. So I'll be right with you once I get this main board back in place. Okay, so I got the main board back in place. I'm just going through uh, one more time to make sure all the screws are tightened. And then we're gonna put the battery back in and the back plate and then we're done.
So all my screws have been tightened. The last thing we need to do before we put the back back on is put the battery back in. So we're just going to put the battery connector back in, make sure that's all the way in. And now we're ready to put the back back on. Make sure everything's snapped into place. And six screws, one, two, three, four, five, six. Put those back on, then we have the mats, and then we're done. Okay, so the screws are back in. Last step, we're gonna put these pads back on the back. They just slide right in. And you wanna make sure that all the lips, like this, are tucked inside and then they'll snap right into place. And now we're done. Let's see, let's turn it on and see if it works. That's what we like to see. That's a fixed Tango 2 controller. That's how you swap the motherboard. All right, so links will be in the description for uh, TBS Tango support, the link to buy a replacement motherboard. And um, thanks for watching. Leave a like if you found this helpful. Feel free to leave any uh, questions in the comment section and I'll try my best to answer them. And have a good one.